I've been the best ever since day one when I walked into this company and I've been vilified and hated since that day because Paul Heyman saw something in me that nobody else wanted to admit. That's right, I'm a Paul Heyman guy. Welcome back to Thinking Critical. This is Wes. Apparently, I have not been uplifting the comic book community enough. At least that's some of the, the feedback that I got recently from a video. I'm going to throw a little space between that comment and when I actually release this thing. But it's got me thinking that uh, I think people misunderstand my position here and why I've created my channel and here talking to me about this because I want to make sure that I'm not nuts here and I'm not crazy. Is my good friend Aaron Sparrow, comic book uh, writer, the man behind Darkwing Duck, but also one of the writers of, of season four of Young Justice. How you doing, Aaron? Doing great, doing great. Let's get let's get into this because I, I I find this topic very interesting. I thought it was very interesting as well. I, I had I, there's like a presumption on what what exactly I created this channel for. For the most part, I created this channel to to do quality reviews, talk about the quality of comic books, and when I say a comic book is good, I want my viewers to know it's going to be damn good because I'm a very critical person. I want to have open discussions. I want to bring people on that have different opinions from me, that come from different walks of life, that have different worldviews than I do, to talk about these things. And I definitely want to deliver the best news that you can get uh, you know, with, with my point of view on whether or not the news is good or bad. Apparently, that has not been completely clear as far as the message that I put out here. This is one of the, the, some of the feedback that I received. And this is what I was told. Things you should be asking, you being me, as a person that people are listening to, are you uplifting the community? <laughs> oh my God. Uh, okay. I, I'm going to go off on a bit of, bit of a rant here, but I am so tired, so tired of hearing the community. This is not a community. Comics is not a community. Comics is an industry. It's a business. What you are doing is you are reviewing the products put out by a business. You have no obligation to uplift a community. Uh, you know, put out good product. Then you'll get all the uplifting that you want. If I'm, look, if you give me a, if I go into a sandwich store, because I love sandwiches, and you give me a shit sandwich, I have no obligation to pretend that it tastes good to uplift the sandwich community, okay? Give me a good product, and then I will give you a good review. We will have a good, you know, a good positive, you know, discussion about it. And I will recommend it. I will shout it from the rooftops. So I'll go tell it on the mountain. But get get out of my face with this nonsense about uplifting the community. I didn't know that was my job. I was, there, I have a, a community of viewers here that I think uh, trust and respect my, my opinions on these things. And that's why I have to be completely honest. And to be honest, Aaron, you know, with my background, this is what I'm completely hardwired for, at least have been as an adult. Not only am I a Gen Xer that, that is very cynical by nature, but I was, you know, an intelligence analyst for the United States military for quite a long time and retired in that. And it was literally my job, what I was paid to do a vast majority of the time, was to look at problem sets and then answer to my general, what what are the intentions or, or how effective is this? Can they defeat us? <laughs> like So th there was no sugarcoating on that stuff. If somebody had uh, great systems or they were completely prepared to, to defeat a, a portion of our military, I had to give that to them. There was no shilling about that. And then another part of my job was to, to analyze these things and think of countermeasures. What could we do to defeat them? So that's what I'm doing here. I'm breaking these things down, and I'm telling you what's good, what's bad, and what could be better. That's literally like how job, my brain is wired. It sounds like your job in the military was very negative, Wes. I, I don't know why you weren't more uplifting to the military community. You, you know, just you should you should be telling them. You know, even though we're outnumbered and we're outmanned and uh, they have superior tech, you should be telling them that no, we're going to win because you want to uplift them, right? You want. You <laughs> yeah, let's put a positive spin on it. Can I shill? <laughs> for our capabilities to our generals so we could get a bunch of people killed. Listen, this is the this is the problem with this idea that you need to be positive all the time. You know, I, I'm a, I'm very much about positivity. I'm I'm very much about uh, finding the finding the good in things, finding the good in people. Uh, you know, I, I definitely uh, come at things from that viewpoint. However. This idea that we just need to blindly say that everything is good, that's not helping anything. When fans are described as toxic, you know, and, and granted, there's some people that go too far, they, they engage in behavior that is, uh, you know, unacceptable. But 
mostly that that's just applied to any fan that has criticism. The reason that fans have criticism, the reason that fans give you feedback is because they love these things, because they're passionate about them and they want them to be the best that they can be. It's actually, you know, companies should not be looking this at this as some kind of like toxic trolling. They should be looking at it as free market research. Hey, why aren't our products selling as well? Oh, here's a whole bunch of passionate people telling us why it, why they don't like it. So maybe we should make adjustments based on that feedback. Yeah, exactly. And he goes on. He says, "Are you driving new sales and new readers? That are you in my job? Am I, the, <laughs> am I the fucking sales? DC and Marvel are not giving me a paycheck." <laughs> at all they don't even give me free previews of the damn things what are you driving sales now i can't say this for a fact i have definitely gotten feedback that on my recommendation people have went out and supported comic books that they didn't even know were existed or that they were going to pass on so i guess in that fact yes i am driving some new sales but i also know that based on on my reviews and people that have trusted my reviews in the past and went out and got the recommendations that I've gotten and then said, oh, that was about spot on or the things that I maybe it was, was more negative in the past and they went and got it anyway. They're like, well, I should have listened to Wes because he had a pretty good appraisal of this. Then I've also stopped sales where people didn't waste their money on comic books that they didn't wait, that they didn't want. So as far as I'm concerned with the with the product or the, the, the reviews and stuff that I'm giving, I'm helping readers stay with comic books because if you read enough bad comics, you're eventually going to leave. I don't want that to happen. As far as new readers, if you come and discover my channel and, and we have similar tastes in comic books and, and you discover comic books and your passion for them because of my passion, that is great. I would love to do that. But the comic book industry as a whole kind of right now, Aaron, are dropping the ball big fucking time. I can't gloss that over. You want me to tell, go out there and be dishonest and be like, oh, yeah, you should be. You should be reading Superman, Son of Kal-El. That's a Cracker Jack comic book. I'm going to do that. <laughs> oh, boy, it's delightful. Boy, every time I crack that cover, I say to myself, man, this is comics. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you need, to become, uh, you need to become that kind of shell. Listen, if you had this, uh, if you had this channel uh, back when uh, I was reading Civil War II and you had warned me about what a garbage fire that was and how Captain Marvel was basically uh, imprisoning people without due process for pre-crime, uh, and uh, turned uh, Kamala Khan into a brown shirt. If you had been online at that point warning me, maybe I wouldn't have walked away for comics for the first time in 30 years. I stopped buying comics cold turkey for several years after reading Civil War II. I was like, this this is done. I don't enjoy this anymore. These are not heroes. I, I'm, I am finished. And I walked away. You know, So the comics industry lost those dollars for, for many, many years before I came back and I started picking up a few titles here and there. But still, nothing near what I was. No, I shill for nobody, and I'm not going to. You know who my favorite writer is? You know who my favorite writer is? is Robert Venditti. He had a new comic book come out this week. It's called World of Krypton. You ain't going to hear me fucking recommend it. You know why, Aaron? <laughs> I didn't like it. <laughs> it was perfectly fine, but nobody should go read that book unless you're really into Krypton. Kryptonian politics just aren't my thing. I'm not going to go out there and push that book, even though that's my favorite writer. I love Sean Gordon Murphy's Batman the White Knight. You can go see that yeah, I've talked about it several times on the channel. I have a full up video on everything I don't like about Sean Gordon Murphy's Batman Curse of the White Knight because I thought the sequel had a lot of failings to it. I'm not here to shield for anybody, even if I like the writing style or whatever. And I can and I can go out there and I will promote comics by people I don't like. I put Vita Ayala's, uh, you know short story in Wonder Woman 750 in my top 10 comic stories of the year last year. Yeah, if you write a good story, and it doesn't, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter that you have literally not liked anything else that, that Vita Ayala has ever done. It's, you know, this one story you liked, so you recommended it. That's, uh, that, that's the way that it should be, you know, and that's the, you want to talk about uplifting a community. That's uplifting your community of viewers because they know that they can trust you for your honest opinion. Once you start shilling, you become like a Kevin Smith where nobody takes you seriously anymore and nobody believes you. He's like, the Star Wars sequels are so great and tears are running down his face and I just got so choked up when I saw the final scene. And it's like, everybody's like, this was horse shit. This was terrible. You were lying. You're just, you're just, you're, you're just a Hollywood shill now. You got to get that next job. So you're not giving us your honest opinion. So we're not going to come to you for your opinions anymore. That's your exactly. responsibility with the channel. I used to go to Collider. I used to watch Collider every single day for their movie news. I would even watch their weekend updates, even though I hate John Campion. I, I did at that time, but I liked everybody else and I liked the content that they were putting out. 
when I went and watched Star Wars, The Last Jedi, I was fuming a few minutes in the movie. It never got better. My wife and I had to take my son out of the movie theater. I've talked about this on the channel. As soon as I got to a computer, I went to Collider and I went to their spoiler review because I wanted to hear what they had to say about that movie. And five minutes into the review, once I found out that the entire panel said that it was a good Star Wars movie, I never watched a second of their fucking program again. And I would never want anyone to have that experience with me to know that those fuckers were absolutely lying. Yeah, yeah, they 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 need they need that media access. So they're you know that's and that's the way that I try to conduct myself as well. Is uh, you know maybe maybe my uh, my career would be in better shape if uh, if I would go out and I would just shill for all these things. But I feel a sense of responsibility to the readers, to the people who have uh, who have supported me, who've read my work, uh, and who you know come to get my opinion on things. I feel like it's incumbent upon me to be honest to the, to them and honest to myself. I don't want to be a sellout. I want things to be as great as they can possibly be. And by praising things that are not just so that you can get work or so that you can uplift the community or whatever it is, uh, you know, or so you can just be seen as a nice person, that doesn't, ultimately, that doesn't serve any of us because it just gives us watered down, bland, uninteresting, or downright awful entertainment. Yeah. So this is the last question that I should be asking myself. Is your goal to promote or tear down the comic book industry? It's neither. My goal is to provide an honest appraisal, whether it be the news or the, the comic books themselves as I review them, to the viewer. I don't care if it promotes the, the comic book or it tears it down. I just want to be honest with my opinion. And when I look at things, there will be things that I think I'm excited for. But I will tell you the things that I think that I see in there that could be pitfalls and why this might fail. And there will be some things like Tom King or Tom King, like Tom Taylor taking over as the writer for Nightwing or, or Superman, son of Kal-El where I go, well, this could be exciting because his work has been better at DC, but there, there are pitfalls that could, could uh, bring this down. And I will do the same things with things. I'm not excited to say, well, this is a positive aspect. There is a good artist attached, or this is a good writer with what it seems to be a bad premise. So there are, there are pros and cons. I just can't go in 100% on most things because not everything is perfect when the news is rolled out. And certainly not everything is perfect or completely uh, terrible for the most part when the final product gets there. And look, as a creator, I know this is not uh, obviously not every creator, but this is my feeling as a creator is I want the fans to give me their honest opinion. I want to know if they really liked what I wrote. You know, I, there's there's this, uh, I have this old anecdote about, uh, you know, like a, a a band and the guy's like i'm not looking for the guy that's like the super fan that loves everything that we do i'm looking for the guy in the audience that's you know standing towards the back and he's not really sure if he likes this and he's kind of got a frown on his face that's the guy that i'm going to try to get off that's the guy that i'm going to try to like you know I'm, I'm aiming for him and that's kind of like my feeling when it comes to comics is that's who we should be aiming for the people that just kind of like go oh, i just love comics and i like everything and i you know i don't really have a lot of you know criticism and i don't really look at things critically i just kind of consume things as they come that those those are the easy fans they're, they're easy to please so you know cool they love it that's great I, i'm happy for them i love that they love everything you know that's fantastic it's, it's probably a very uh, nice way to go through your life just thinking that everything is great but if i can get that guy in the back that doesn't want to like what i'm doing and i can make him like it and i can turn him around then i'm like i'm increasing the audience exponentially I'm, I'm getting past the people who are just there who are going to kind of like everything because they don't really expect anything i'm going for the guy that's got high expectations i'm going for the doc that's what i'm doing i'm going for the guy that's cynical that's like burnout that's like man everything they've been giving me sucks that's the guy that i want to write something for that goes oh my god this is good i want to reawaken that dude's passion for comics and then i want him to go tell all his friends who are lapsed comic fans you know this this book is really good and they're going to come back and check it out and then they're going to go out and they're going to they're going to bring new readers in that should be the goal the goal should be make something so good that people can't not praise it can't not go sing its praises to everybody that they know and bring in more people yeah, there's nothing more exciting to me when I open up a comic book and when I'm done, I'm like, holy shit, I did not plan on reviewing this because this wasn't supposed to be one of the hot comics books this week, but I have to review it right now. Mm -hmm. I have to tell everybody that they need to go get the latest issue of Action Comics. And you know what? Because we're seeing it, it right can't now, be denied. Yeah. And what we're seeing right now in the. Uh in the sphere and why YouTube is, is YouTubers are so uh, spat upon and kind of looked down on 
is because they're getting the audience. Your colliders, your nerdists, they're not getting the audience anymore because everybody recognizes that they are lying to you. They are, they are shills. They have to do that to get the media access and they've completely cut their credibility out from under them. The reason that like channels like Clownfish TV, like your channel, like Perch, uh, you know, all these channels are, uh, are jumping off and, and the reason that people like them is because they're just looking for honest opinion, even if they disagree with you. And you're allowed to disagree with me. You know, you're allowed to, you're allowed to disagree with Wes. You know, you come on here, you disagree with us, we will, we will try to engage respectfully. Uh, but, you know, you can't sit and define what the channel should be because what the channel should be is honest. We should be giving you our honest take on the stories, on the news, on everything that's going on, because otherwise, how can you trust us? Yeah, there are enough shill channels out there. There are enough shill avenues. If you want to hear how great everything is, you can absolutely hear that. You're just not going to get it here. And I'm not apologizing for that either, because this is exactly what I set out to do. I've accomplished what I wanted to accomplish when I started the channel and a whole lot more. I'm, I'm much better at this than I ever thought I would be. And, and, and I think uh, uh, there's a lot of people out there that trust me that this guy comes on. This is the last statement. And I think this is, you know, kind of his expectation that's failing him, not me. He says it's one thing to want better and advocate for that. I wholeheartedly believe that. Absolutely. I want to be an agent of change. I want to affect change within the comic book industry for the positive. I can tell you that right now. That is really the pr my priority being here. He says, but I see more and more negativity from your videos with each passing day. You are watching the negative videos. I have lost leader videos, video slots that I put out content that I know will perform less, less views than other content that I could be putting in those places that are intentionally positive. When I do the comic book retrospectives, when I do the best comic books of the week, when I do those Hawkbane reviews from the Disney Plus show that have been overwhelmingly positive, I know those aren't going to do as well as other things, but I want to put them out there because I'm passionate about those projects. I'm passionate about the, the work that I'm putting out there, and it is there for you to find. If you only click on the on the ones with the negativity and it's easy to see which videos are going to be negative, I put it plain as day in the, in the thumbnail, that's on you, not me. And he also he finally finishes, I'm concerned you lost sight of why you wanted to talk about comics in the first place, You love uh, your love for them. I absolutely love comic books. I am very passionate about all of this. I talk about comic books every single day of my life. I read comic books every single day of my life because I do love them. And I love each and every one of you. And I don't want you to read bad comic books. I don't want your comic book fandom to be ruined by all this shitty content that's out there. And I'm just trying to put out my honest appraisal out there. But there is absolutely positive content on the channel. And do you know why I have a room full of action figures? Do you, do you know why? Because they are from comic books that I love. But the comic book industry is not serving me anymore. It's not telling me stories that I'm interested in. It's not portraying characters in the way that they've always been portrayed. It, they're not hiring the best writers. They're not, you know, they're not bringing the A game. So I've moved on. I'd like my love has transferred to another aspect of comics, which is action figure representations of the characters that I love, where they're not attached with anybody's political baggage or anybody's, uh, you know, my brand is this and I'm going to, you know, shove this down the throat. You know, it's, it's just, Hey, I, I loved crossbones back, uh, during the, uh, the, <laughs> the, uh, the, the whole, uh, oh, what's that, what's that story? I love it so much. Uh, now I'm like blanking on it. Uh, the, uh, streets of poison. You know, you had Crossbones versus Bullseye versus Red Skull versus Kingpin, all that stuff. I went out and bought a Crossbones figure because I love that story so much, because I love those characters so much. It's This is all out of love. But sometimes the things that you love don't love you back. And right now the comic industry is not loving us back for the most part. Exactly. In my, in my personal opinion, a lot of things that are driving the narrative across the, the publishers are negative. I don't think putting current day politics ham fistedly in there and hammering readers over the head with them is positive for the industry. I think it's going to drive people away. I don't think that doing stunt marketing and just changing your characters willy nilly at the drop of a hat is good for, for the long term viability and health of the comic book industry. I'm not going to cover that part up. It's not my fault that that is those the major narratives that are going through comic books right now. When House of X Powers of Ted happens, I'm going to sing its praises. When the first half of, uh, what was it, Absolute Carnage happens, I'm going to sing its praises. When Doomsday Clock happens, I'm going to sing its praises. But I'm not going to sing the praises of Hellfire Gala. I'm just not. I'm not going to sing the praises of Superman, Son of Kal-El. It sucks ass. It's not a good comic book. It's bad for the industry. 
And I'm going to tell you that out of love, not because I hate any of this stuff. If I didn't like what I was doing, I wouldn't be here anymore. I have three kids, six and under. I have a beautiful wife. I don't have to be doing this. I do it because I do love it. And no one should be able to, no one should come in and presume to tell you what your channel is. Exactly. That's, you know, but that's if that's what you're coming for, if you're coming for shill, you ain't getting it here and you <laughs> never will. <laughs> but again, you can focus on the positive videos and go look, go watch our, uh, our Hawkeye Disney plus review. Uh, you know, all, all three of us are really high on that show right now. You know, we're really enjoying it. That's our honest opinion. You may feel differently. You know, maybe you watched it and you don't like it. I, I'm not going to tell you, you know, if you like put in the comments, well, I, I didn't think the show was good and I thought it was structured badly and I didn't like this and that. I'm not going to tell you, why aren't you uplifting the Disney plus community? What's the matter with you? I'm going to say art is subjective. I'm sorry you didn't like it. I wish you liked it as much as I did because you would have had a good time with it. Same thing with, with comics. You know, hey, if you read a comic that I think sucks and you think it's great, I'm glad you think it's great. You know, it's like I, I may question, you know, your ability to uh, <laughs> determine what a good story is, but I'm actually happy for you that you liked it. I don't root for things to fail. I don't think Wes roots for things to fail either. I think that's, you know, the channel is we're rooting for comics to succeed. It's the greatest medium on the face of the earth, the greatest storytelling medium. It's fantastic. We love it. We have dedicated ridiculous portions of our lives and our finances to it. And uh, and we absolutely want it to be the best that it can be. So that's that's where we're always coming from. Yeah, so I, I think people just have a fundamental misunderstanding of what I'm trying to do here. I think I'm accomplishing everything that I set out to do, and I think I've done it uh, far better than I ever could have imagined, but hey, I can't please everybody, I guess, Aaron. I mean, people come in with like a preconceived notion of what, uh, what we, we've kind of like gotten to this point where criticism is seen as, as inherently negative. And criticism is not inherently negative. Criticism is given so that things can be made better, so that they can grow. You know, you have to be able to accept criticism as a creative, as just in, in your life in general. You know, you have to be able to accept criticism. You have to understand that sometimes people are going to come to you and they're going to point out unpleasant truths that you don't like to hear. And you can either ignore those and continue down that path, uh, you know, towards, you know, the destruction that they're trying to warn you against, or you can, you know, maybe take their words into consideration and course correct. And I think that's what Wes is trying to do here. Yeah, I just think people, they, they, uh, they hone in on, on maybe some of the negative criticism because there, there are plenty of videos have negative and positive criticism where I say this really is effective. This part isn't. And they go, oh, you said that's not effective. I can't take it. Listen, if you listen to it to a totality, I explain to you exactly why I think things are failing. And I explain to you exactly why I think things are, are succeeding. And a lot of times when I think they're failing, I will tell you uh, how, I, how I think it could be better or things that they should take into consideration that would improve the overall product. I'm not just here saying this sucks. I, I'm much more in depth with my analysis, and I explain everything. If you if you disagree with me, that that's fine. We have a, a fundamental disagreement, but I'm not here to uplift any community. I'm not here to drive uh, new sales. Nobody's paying me to do that. People are paying me uh, with their time, and you know I do get uh, revenue from from YouTube for my honest opinion and my appraisal. And so I'm not here to promote or tear down the comic book industry. I'm here to give you an accurate representation. And I'll tell you, ultimately, I'm here to be an agent of change, to affect change in the comic book industry for the positive, to ensure the long-term viability of the medium that I personally love more than any other storytelling medium in the world. I'll let you have the last word, Aaron. I think you just nailed it. Go tell it on the mountain, man. <laughs> Preach, my brother.